Okay. Okay, so we're going to try this for like the umpteenth time. I have I've been doing I've been doing some things on the background to try to get this to work. And granted, this is an older game. I'm trying to get it to run on Linux. I've been down for a little bit trying to, you know, just we're going to go ahead and close this window while we're at it. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Long story short, uh, I've been down for a minute, got eye surgery, have to mention it again, I had to make an obligation for another video that involved firearms. Um, there will be more firearm content on my channel because, uh, quite frankly, I enjoy them. I especially enjoy my rifle in particular, but that's aside the point. I have played this game before, just bottom line up front, but I've played this game with a passing temperament because usually when it comes to games that have some kind of story or background into them i don't really pay attention i'm, I'm going to keep it real with you i play video games just kind of sort of for the brain rot but that's aside the point we're going to go through this because um if i remember correctly i was recommended this game to assist with creativity issues and i granted still want to do them it's a matter of where does the drive and motivation come from and why in a sense am i self self-sabotaging myself to not go after it because i enjoy it at the end of the day but why am i doing it but that's aside the point uh the fear has gotten to me i have become self-conscious so we're gonna start with this uh Yes, my audio is on. And if anything happens in this video and the cropping and all of that is weird, let, I've also moved over to Linux from Windows. I decided to go ahead and cut that cord. Reason will be in another video. Or maybe in this video. We'll see how it turns out. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. I will do that in a second, but... We're going to go ahead and turn down this mouse sensitivity because, Jesus Christ, I feel it skating across the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the... Yeah, get it nice and low. ...basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made, until suddenly one day he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. 
And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Koda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. What the fuck? Um, this game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. The Halo level? Or not the Halo level. Hold on. kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately, we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin to I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Huh. I think one of the thoughts that I had before is when it comes to anything artistic or at least 3D design and some of the stuff that I started noticing when I started doing it is you would think there'd be like some whole fleshed out world behind it as though you were living in that same reality. Where am I going? But in all actuality, you're literally just seeing like one small slice and that's it. Nothing else is uh put out behind it. And I thought that was just fascinating to me. The station has a labyrinth on it. I, uh, <laughs> sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in Wait, the what? interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Thank you. Actually, or you know what? If you'd really like to solve the labyrinth, you're welcome to do that too. Uh, oh shit. Hold on, I can figure this out because we came in through here. And it should have been through here. Whoops. Huh. Ah, uh, shit. I may have done a fucky wucky. Yes, indeed. I have done a fucky wucky. Ah, oh, god damn it. It wasn't over here. It was definitely on this side, though. There we go. And that took me to the half corner. I should be able to travel up right here. Hang right, and there's the door. There's the door. There's the door. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. And I apologize for pausing it again, but... Anti-aliasing... Go ahead and turn that on. I'm curious to see how pretty this game can get. Granted, this thing looks like it was built on freaking the Source 1 engine, but still. Source 1 mods are apparently still uh, still in high demand. At this point, I think it's a nice little beginner engine for people to get involved in. But mainly I was looking for... No, I guess it's not. Mainly I was looking for subtitles. So if you're deaf, sorry, it is what it is. You'll have to deal with uh, YouTube on this one. You there. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... 
your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? I don't really have a choice. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. What, a whole lot of nothing? Or I just fuck off in space. I see, I went from there. The causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Yep, in this game, you can only walk backwards. I kind of remember this one. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Can I? Okay, I guess I can. What if the future is always behind her? How will she find strength? Oh shit. To confront it. It's a short little thought. It says what oh, it shit. wants to say and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works. Because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. So he wants to explore larger concepts and he just makes a short... I heard footsteps around me. So he wants to make... Well. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. So if you want to do weird shit, just start small projects Oftentimes, is what I'm seeing here. Bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? Mm. Nope. I properly don't have a response for that one. Why am I slow? Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Sure. What if I hit enter? Okay, nope. One time thing. What the fuck is this? The blurb room? A room that's warm, 
and nice and filled with little ideas for games. Oh? Koda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Okay. I was going to take that one in a completely different direct direction, because if it's a room full of ideas and you're coming to a crawl, that means you're coming to a crawl trying to finish up one idea and you got 50 more in the background that you want to work on. I guess. What is the... Uh, this is... Yeah, it's a point of no return. Fuck. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. man I don't I can't remember this one unless ah don't forget that solution because we're going to see this puzzle again soon we're gonna see it a lot I just noticed this there's three dots and there were three dots in the last one is that supposed to be a calling card or something That seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Uh -huh. Alright, now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Oh, sweet lord. So how am I supposed to get everywhere else? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find oh, it funny that wait. this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same, is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? I hate to interrupt you when you're on a roll. Oh, close captioning. Hey, there you go. Full captions. <laughs> My bad. Also, there is only master volume. There is no music volume. So if it's piercing at this point, I apologize. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make yeah. all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. 
One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Kuda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. I mean, that that was also kind of sort of the only the tools engine you can get your hands on back in the day, but hey, whatever. Creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Kuda's games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Oh, wait a minute. Can I? Oh, I can't crouch jump. Damn it. Okay. Linear, boxy corridors, source engines. Good at doing that. Got you. All right. Yeah, of course. Wait. What is this? Oh, yeah. I remember. Ah, oh, Jesus. I'm marking my age here a little bit. I remember even in the source, even in the original source engine, the toilets were just kind of freaking blocky and flat. Jesus Christ, gaming and just gaming has come a long way, man. A long goddamn way. Can I not? There we go. I can get back in there. There used to be no sinks, no finer details. It was all just it was all just one brick and textures. All textures. <laughs> whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, what's this? Oh, I can't even get over that. This is just kind of weird. Oh, wait, is this the free fall? This is free fall. OK. I wouldn't call this a corridor, though. I mean, it's disguised by just I'd imagine this whole room is just one big block, but it's disguised by the blackness. It's like an abyss. So it may be good at doing like one thing or another, but you play, you get creative on how you get it to play oh shit, to its strengths. We're just going to bop. I don't believe this game has fall damage. So we're going to work. I don't know. Shit, I don't officially know that. So we're going to work with the knowledge that maybe there is some fall damage. I just happen to have shells legs. And I missed that like a motherfucker. pretty cool. I will say I do like this circular interior. It looks nice, even though it's simple. This was supposed to be a uh, jail? Has to be. Can I? No, I can't. All right, we will. This prison. Yep, funny jail. Enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're going to skip that. Please. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. I think I remember the lesson on this one. It's something along the lines of if you want something, if you want something done, then you can kind of just do it to a minimal stand. You can just, if you want something done, then do it. But if you want it done with style, or at least you want it done right, 
then you can accomplish the cat you can accomplish the task of doing that making it not playable and just kind of sort of seeing the lessons i'm doing i think i don't know like i said i've, I've played this without proper li properly listening to it like ages ago and i'm just coming back to it yeah, there are three dots again or rather i don't know maybe i'm just stupid if you want playable games, they can be simple. With the exact same solution. But if you want something enjoyable, it can't really be too. It can't really be simple. Maybe, probably. I don't know. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Uh, shortly is very shortly. I can't remember how long this game is. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can finish it tonight. I know it's not super long, but it's long enough. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, these are the NPCs. There were NPCs in this game. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Do these... <laughs> That's the world above. You've been there. Now, this is important. Do you have... Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was the last thing I did before coming here. Again. Perfect. Now, please, tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. Trust me, you don't want to go over there. Oh, no, but I do. We do. We need to get out there. Do you understand? It is the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there is nothing I want more. All right. Can I... I modeled some books up there, too. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it's a jank of old... Well, not really old engines. They still do it on new engines, too. How did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Yes, do you want to know how to solve it? No, no, we actually find the black space between the doors to be far more interesting. Have you seen it? What? Actually, now that you mentioned it, I remember feeling strange that I passed through it. Don't, don't think too hard about it. You'll see it again soon. All right, you, you know what's up. So we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Okay. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're gonna see it in the work as well. His games are just gonna become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. His end destination is just supposed to be a courtyard? A close up courtyard? Oh. 
Ah, yes, the average Reddit moderator. All right. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. Can I jump off? I can't. Ironic, Damn. Isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game yeah, and I feel that see one. the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Oh, no. Cabbage. <laughs> My cabbages! All right. Uh, we're gonna skip over pretty much the rest of these, unless we got something that's weird that snags my attention. are getting a little bit more sp well never mind i spoke too soon i was gonna say they're getting a little bit more sparse but at this level we're going to see the puzzle again and here i'll tell you what i think the puzzle means each of these games represents an idea that was on coda's mind at the time that he was making it and the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one in each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between the spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Okay, so he finishes a piece and then he just takes a break? Also, found the solution, you weak bitch. <laughs> The only one that made it through. Oh. Wait a minute. 
I can be anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Why are we having so much difficulty talking? Speak, speak. Jesus, hell. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. I'd imagine I have to get to the well. Hello, hello. Still can't sprint. Or is this? Oh, hey. See, like, this is it the whole game and there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it you just walk to the end of a hallway except oh, for some oh, reason shit. Cody gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture and I don't know why but he decides he needs to revisit this prison he's gonna start over use the same assets turn it into something else okay cool here's version two uh what furniture ought to go in the center of the room? Uh, a fridge. Fuck it. That's not a fridge. Uh, along the uh, huge picture of a horse. Or not. I think we should light up this room. Tesla coils. Hell yeah, brother. That's not a Tesla coil. Wee. Table's already here. Who are you? Where's this coming from? Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness's sake. I can't remember the SCP number for the uh, infinite Ikea, so okay, forgive me. He throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. What are the dots? Now turn the floor lamp, this room off, and then turn it back on. The dots, Mason, what do they fucking mean? Left side sofa and move it over a little. Finally, touch the shelves. That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now open. Return to the start and take it back to your prison. Um. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I this one's not so bad. This, to see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Wait, like, there's a the door again. Eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. No, we have the upside down level classic. It doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. Can I? Oh, I can't. And then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. So in summary, he kept doing the prison idea because he thought he could make it better. First, he went too hard. Then he dialed it back a little bit. 
And then he found it just right, got his idea out there, and just said, all right, done. Hit the goalpost, moving on to the next one. I think. All right. Hello? Who is this? Trapped in the prison too. Yep, I was in the furniture maze. It's a I was conversation. In the... And so this is what Koda wants: is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Koda talking to himself. already forgetting what being in prison is like. It's strange, but the way I kind of miss being in the prison, it feels like being completely still and wildly emotional at the same time. We'll go with that one, yeah. Was there anything that I felt good of? Well, it was... Yeah, it sucks, but it's something that you also just looked on. It's like, well, I know what I'm doing today. It was comfortable, I knew its limits, and I knew my place. Hmm. What you feel excited about getting out? Promise of freedom? Okay. Excited. It's the only thing that matters to me. Fair enough. It's the only thing that keeps me going. Excited doesn't really do it justice. Exactly. You have something you care about, something to look forward to. Wait, if you're me, then did you get a call from another version of you when you were trapped? I, no, I think I am. Then can you tell me how to get out? Maybe I can come find you. Hey man, sit and spin. That's the best I got for you. Sit and suffer. Uh, to get all you have to do is just be sincere to get out. All you need to do is tell me how you feel right now. Uh, we'll go with three. Because sometimes you just need to talk some things through. It will make sense. Just talk to me. Listen, you can't know can't know until you're out, but I promise it works. That's That would never work on me. Yep, as long as you need, buddy. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay. Wouldn't that be nice? So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? I think I remember this level. To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. What if I just skip this one altogether? Just so you're aware, nothing will happen up here until you've been inside the house. I'm gonna call bullshit on that one. Da 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 da, there's no leveler. <laughs> there's no lever. Shit, all right. Fine, I'm going inside the house. Be really cool if you uh, let me enable sprint and jump on the roof, though. Really cool if you did that. I am coming in the house. Aw, oh, man. Juice on the nice table. That's an upside-down picnic table from the looks of it. 
glad as heck that you showed up. Though I might have cleaned the entire house all by myself and right miserable. Hold on, the music. You'll notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create as a result. Well, now you just might be getting a little ahead of yourself, no? Why don't we start cleaning? Uh, yeah, sure. Run to the bedroom and make the bed. This is actually... It actually is really nice. too wild about this kitchen layout, but it's nice. Straighten the rug out, all the details matter. All right. As you end up doing this, Friend dragged me along at a time when I was particularly desperate for cash. Turns out I never felt so good doing something for money in my whole life. Never did like to clean my own home. Nah. Might have gotten some demons I ain't not ready to face yet. Oh, speaking of demons, someone put this couch in a mess. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll straighten them out. Boom! Throw pillows arranged. Spilled a drink. Yep, saw that first. to share an incredibly cheesy personal insight. Yeah, make it especially cheesy. Fuck it. While we're here, share. Alright, I'll go fuck myself then. Hey, this just need to be washed. Why don't you do that? Yeah, I wish I could clean him that fast in, rea in reality. Holy crap. Best you can. No need to be perfect. We're all human. Oh, the tub. Ooh. Put a polish on that thing. There are books scattered on the floor in the bedroom. Cool. Do I get access to anything else, or...? After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you and eventually cohere into something meaningful. Okay. Go on. In your life, you're going to clean a lot of houses. Among all of these, a few of them will stick out as truly a wonderful, beautiful experiences. And none of them will be the ones that were easy. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only Just one something to think about. Me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was, like, grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant smile on his face. Turn around for like 30 seconds. in the tub so we're doing the books again arrange the throw pillows I'm glad he found some peace 
answer. What you got? But, of course, it can't last. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. Do I enjoy this? I saw that last. Oh, wait a minute. The hell happened here? So he came here to relax because it was a place of comfort or do something that was comfortable. And then he had to stop and ask himself, hey, do I actually enjoy doing this? Like truly enjoy it? Or am I just here because this is familiar and it makes me happy? Well, that's kind of a stupid question, but <laughs> do I enjoy this or does this make me happy? Well, this because I think I kind of get out. Oh, there's the light post again. I think I kind of get it. Because you could be happy in some place and not really fully enjoy it, but you could be content, but not expressively content, if that makes any sense. I, I don't know, man. Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. I'm starting to think that's the point too, my guy. This one gets a bit goofy. About halfway through the game, the perspective shifts. Uh... This is the key. How do I achieve it with no effort? On the way to work, I told an elderly person to start contributing to society. Link. You discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. Outstanding. What happens if we jump into... Ah, oh, we can't. And this mel this fucking maelstrom's just gonna follow me around. That is that does actually look nice though, but it's also creepy. Well, let me tell you right now, it isn't effortless. Then it's got the right answer. I still love you. It's just that you make me feel cold on the inside, being alone. Okay, so this dude is just human. Thank goodness all of you perceive me as being wise and intelligent. Drinking is not hurting my life. If you're torturing yourself, trying to find the right solutions for your life, you're not doing it right. Wait, if you're torturing yourself, trying to find the right solutions for your life, you're not doing it right. I can get down with that. It's understandable. Do you understand that you won't be happy until you love me? This is for you. Whoa, all right. That's, that's an abuse one. Seek out only one thing, and that's the easiest, simplest pass, path forward. Yes and no. Sometimes the hardest path is going to be the more rewarding path. You're going to have, it's going to hurt, but the hardest path is tends to be a little bit more rewarding. Like Occam's razor is a very beautiful thing where sometimes the simplest thing is the best solution, but sometimes you just got to, you know, dig a little deep and take that hard path. I'm developing a cyst. Yeah, this dude is human. <laughs> All this is telling me is that this dude is human. I'm just kidding. I don't want to do some ecstasy after this. There is no truth. There is no path. Oh, I can select the other ones. Oh! Do what is easiest. Do what is simplest. No. If I'm not a good teacher, holy shit, you guys are something coming out of the back room. Look out.
It's coming for you. It's going to destroy you. Run, everyone, run. I, feel I don't like know. For this one. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. To uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. I think about this game a lot these days. This one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. I'm trying to remember this one because it this one actually is kind of sort of at the front of my mind. And I don't I don't want to spoil well this game's been out for god knows how many years but I think this is the one where we actually have like a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation. Jesus Christ, this is a huge stage. What now, game? I came in for- Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, it's bright. <laughs> You'll be playing as me. We're gathering a professionals first. You start leaning- Oh, shit. One across the room in the chair. It's your dream to photograph animals professionally. This is your chance to learn something from her, to gain something, to succeed. Go on, say something to her. Buenos dias, chica. Sorry, I have to leave. Where's the bathroom? Let's we'll start with a hello. Oh, brother, you gave me two other options and quite frankly... I'm super duper scared, but oh, okay. Here are all of my hopes and dreams. Okay, we'll start with this one. That's not what I said to Sir. You are completely missing the tone of the conversation. I was reserved, but I knew what I wanted, and I was confident for some reason. It was just one moment, but it was... All right. I'll give you some props. Props? You're giving me prop cones? What the fuck? Bounce when you touch them will represent people nearby. Talk to her again. Uh, all right. You must have worked really hard to get where you are. I'll bet you learn to lean into the pain. What are some sacrifices you've had to make? I mean, yeah, that's some... How's that messing it up? I think that's actually a reasonable fucking question. You'll freak her out if the conversation gets that personal quickly. Okay. There's nowhere to go but back. The game ends with this eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety, to fears of having to perform and having to chase success, the answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away, which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this game. You know, it, it looks to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from people. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games, because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect, 
to connect with this person, to bring him closer. Um, well, why does it really matter? You do? After this, Koda went off and took another five months to make a new game. Is this, is this dude your friend or are you his counselor? That doesn't make any sense that... Like, maybe if you were his best friend, but at the same time, it's like, oh, that's, oh no, that's not what I want for him. Well, I want the best for the dude. I'm not going to do it for him, though. That's something he has to come to himself. To play this game properly, you must keep your eyes closed. Wait, what? Okay, I'll keep my eyes closed. I don't know how this is exactly going to fucking work out for me. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. I see what's going on. Oh, hey, there's the door. <laughs> I think you this is the one. Your eyes if you haven't already. It's pretty much impossible to solve otherwise. And there is a solution. Oh, shit. Way. This happens to speak to something that's honest. Like I said, I was getting concerned. First off, he's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So where's that coming from? But then even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. Here was the point in my relationship with Koda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. I... Hmm. Like I just asked, so who are you in relation to him? Because, yeah, it's great to have a friend that recognizes that, but... I don't know, maybe my situation is different. Like, there's a very stark difference between somebody who actually needs help, and that's if their life is literally getting literally being destroyed versus somebody who just wants to be left the fuck alone just to ponder to themselves. Because there's a come to Jesus meeting and then there's just a, hey, I need, just need to talk to myself meeting. They are vastly different. I haven't been honest. I can't figure out how to say the thing. I thought this was going to be easy. I'm stuck in it. I have to work harder. Mm. I don't know. In your case, you said you wanted to be alone. Now, let's say you're stuck in it. Also, it's really eerie that the music just stopped. There it is. All right. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. Uh... Can I climb the tree? I'll take that out. Can I fall out? No, okay. There's a machine that kept me, and then it stopped. I'm trying to find this engine that used to protect me. It started to get... Wait, what? We'll go with the first one.
I could take it to it, but there was a problem. Featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations. This one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even. And yet, still, he keeps making games. He keeps That's not what I said. Throwing himself into the grinder, even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? I picked option three. Because from my perspective at the time, and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet. And so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. Hey, boom, there you go. And we're out. You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. You have to say the game development is simple and joyous and you love 100% of the time. Where's the crying coming from? Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching him do this to himself, and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like, video games are not worth this amount of suffering. Uh, I'm kind of curious how you're picking up this message, because if this is the game that you're playing, and this is the end point of it, or damn near the end point, it looks like he's getting over shit. And yes, making video games, you definitely shouldn't suffer. I this have a problem really with crunch about. culture, but that's beside the point. I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. Here are some of my hopes and dreams. Yes, that feels fantastic. Now that this is helping, I'm going to vomit. Please, where's the machine? Okay, never mind. We're going back into it. Pain breezes effortlessly off me. Any sacrifices made for my work are worth 100% of the time. It always pays off eventually. Yeah, it does. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. Hey, narrator, where the hell are you getting this from? I stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. For him to get out of his rut? There was no shame, no fear, no guilt. Like, oh, yeah, all these... All these, yes, they are, uh, what you call it? Questionable, but if you just ignore that and you just get to the point where it's like, hey, speak positively, and you're paying attention to the chat in the bottom right, I believe this, unquestionably, I am a vessel for certainty. Yeah, okay, that one's weird to me. I will be safe, I'm at work, there is no shame, no fear, no guilt. There you go. Then all that shit goes away. Everything else is irrelevant. From the looks of it, this man is building himself up, and you're afraid of that?
but it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. Yes, Das Machine. I can't fall off. We've captured the machine. It's waiting for you now. You can begin the interrogation whenever you like. I intend to be brutal. Thank you very much. Very good. Sehr Yes, we want that someone's called the press, so we might have a bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing. Oh, okay, damn it. I can't read quick enough. Jesus Christ! Ma'am. I just picked up on that. So Coda was the one that was crying in the end. Interesting. And here is the machine. It's the machine. Looks fine. You stop beating us. Your work was keeping us alive. Your work was keeping us healthy. Let's feeding, keeping us alive. We'll go with two. All right, now I see where his concern is coming in. If this is what he played, and this is the latter half of the game. All right. to admit to the people that you allowed them to suffer. Well, you're expecting a machine to talk, dude. <laughs> but uh, what are you getting out of this? Think carefully. I know how to hurt you. reminds me of a short by Thor I just saw, which I might have to either link or play in this video. I have seen the things that you fear. Yeah, that reminds me directly of the video. Oh, shit. It clicked. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> Let's do this. Dystopian. But this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks that we are. We will find a way we live without it. We do not need its games. Let us pay it retribution. Let us show it that we are not failures. Follow me to destroy. What? Well, destroy the machine? Hold on. Wait a minute. We will destroy everything that the machine has created. It's a lose-lose situation here. I remember the same joke that I made about this, and it was in bad taste, so I think I'm gonna skip over that. And yep, you are definitely destroying everything, my guy. Too bad I can't aim down sights. 
Koda, I'll make sure your work dies here. Koda, I'll make sure you are known forever. Ooh, wait a minute. Uh... So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. No, he keeps saying him, so, so Coda's... Yeah, thinking this. All right, whatever. That I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback. So, what if I did it for him? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Oh, wait a minute. Nope, I remember. No, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea, dude. No, see, that's the thing. Like some people, when they're when they're in a state like that, they just have to work it out themselves. You can't fuck with the process. I re I remember this now. Okay, no, this is that's a bad idea, dude. You don't want to do that. Sometimes you just gotta leave well enough alone. Ooh. So I started showing. Oh boy, work. here I go. I took this one and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the, the point of it all is just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. This is... Ooh, you done, you done, you done fucked up, son. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something... I really felt like I'd done something good, like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy. So beautifully, beautifully happy. But how did they feel? You did all of this to try to fix him when you were trying to fix yourself and you stole his shit in the so process. Anyway, Koda finishes this game and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Um, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. This is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. It's a very cold... Well, if you just spent the last fuck knows how long taking some of his games and showing it off to people when he was doing it... ...actually has a maze in it. Oh, fuck. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the levels. So when you're ready to continue, 
press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. What words of the bridge? But no, from the sounds of it, it sounds like they were just doing it like for their own thing and you just hijacked it because you wanted to feel good. That's my guesstimate. So you hijacked it. It's not like this is the first demanded game more. needed some modification to be playable. And now like this is like his send off of, hey, you need no, to fuck off, to dude. actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. 151617. Come on. 16. Damn it! One and seven. Wait. Yep. Boom. Magic. So you demanded more and more games. They got tired of making more and more games. So this is just their, kind of sort of their send off and farewell of here. Have fun with this. It is a quote unquote playable game that will keep you busy and leave me alone. That's what I'm picking up here. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Koda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. But I can open this door for you, so let me do that. Was I a failure for not understanding this game? I, mean, I don't know why I would be. It's not like everything needs to have a solution, but I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed and I don't understand why. I remember it's June of 2011. I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though, that was the thing. For years I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. He, he saw the dots too! And he wouldn't. What does the ampersand, not the ampersand, the, what does the ellipses mean? So strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. What the hell? It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. Boom, there it is. But he stopped and left and it felt somehow like I had failed. Yeah, because the dude you were leeching off uh, for attention pretty much just said, I'm done with you from the sounds of it. Where did I screw up? Getting in his personal space and trying to get him to come out of his shell when he didn't want to. Oop, here we go. Thank you for your interest in my games. I need I to ask the you. the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? It's because of what I did. Fuck! I poisoned it for you. I 
I don't think I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. You've so infected my personal space, that's possible. And the people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. You've so infected my personal space that it's possible... That it... Wait. You've so infected my personal space that it's possible I did begin to plant solutions in my work somewhere hidden between my games. If there was an answer, a meeting, would it make you in would it make you any happier? Would you stop taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? Giving them something giving them something that is not yours to give, violating the boundary that keeps me safe. Would you stop changing my games? Stop adding lampposts to ooh. Uh And then you stopped, and I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. What does that mean? I actually think I am frustrated or broken says more about you than about me. Uh, I realize that doesn't make any sense to you just yet, which is fine. You're not my problem. So, well, that's fair. But I do hope that one day it clicks and that you make peace with this thing you are I'm wrestling. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And when you finally see what I'm talking about, don't say anything. Oh, shit. Yeah. I, I kept running my fucking mouth and I missed the, I missed the thing altogether. Can I not quote? That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything, and so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, Will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Walls closed again. Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading, and all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, 
more, 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 more. More oh, shit. love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. Um... Solution, solution, solution. I don't, um... I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. Don't project yourself onto somebody else's work when you're, when you think you dislike yourself, just do it yourself, maybe? I'm, try, I'm trying to properly formulate, I'm trying to properly put in my thoughts here because that last one, I, I remember now playing it for the first time. And I feel a little, and I feel like I'm cheating you guys a little bit and I apologize because that did make me ball like a bitch. Now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you. I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation. What would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. Do stuff that makes you happy and to hell with everybody else. But I know, I know what he's feeling, though. Um, what now? I don't know, man. Get over it. I think I need to go. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for. And so I'm just gonna okay apologize if I'm being quiet, but I really don't have... I don't have anything to add to this. Unfortunately. But I guess the key takeaway, hopefully, if I understand it, is if you want happiness, man, you have to seek it out for yourself. You can't do it through external validation. And one of the most poisonous things to do. God oh, damn it stops. And one of the most poisonous or toxic toxic things to do is to seek external validation through somebody else's work. Because sometimes some people just want to be left alone. They just want to be they just want to vibe. 
and they can't really vibe if you're always in their space trying to look for your look trying to look for that next hit of uh, dopamine or validation. Like if you want to be happy, do it for yourself. Make something yourself. I don't know. Maybe I'm way off base. Maybe I'm way off base. So somebody can correct me below. But that's 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 what I'm picking up right now. comes back to the space level. Uh, hello? Oh, shit. Christ. It doesn't hit as hard as the first time. But still it kind it, it it still it still hurts a little bit. With a lot of this, like I, it, hopefully if I haven't said it like the first 50 times, I apologize. I know I'm probably repeating, but it's been a minute since I've played this. And first time I wasn't really paying attention. Well apparently I was paying a lot more attention than what I thought I was, because I remembered kinda sorta how it hinted how it ended excuse me and the first time i'm not gonna cry i'm not gonna lie i i cried like a bitch i, I bawled my eyes out but i want to say imposter syndrome or i could be way off base this dude just oops something's happening okay i guess it's not but that is the beginner's guide just if anything what i've learned from this and again, I could be way off base if I am. Hey, man, I'm not I'm not immune to corrections and I'll consider it, but. It, it's it's something to consider. Apart from the first video I made where. You want to do this to improve it. Well, actually, no. Yeah, you know, it's it, the exact same thing. You want to do this to try to improve yourself. But if you're going to do that. You can't be a person that seeks external validation because it's it, it, external validation clout stuff like that it, it, it's it's a drug it's it's like you're doing this to get another hit and in this dude's case it didn't really seem like he was doing it well in this dude's case excuse me it seemed like he was just leeching off of somebody else's work for somebody who just wanted to be left well the hell enough alone like the games were for you they were more for him that made me feel comfortable and who are you to come into my space and kind of sort of just take my shit that's what I'm picking up. It's it's something to think on, at least for me. 
Um, yeah, that's about it. Y'all stay safe. Have a good one. I've, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to stew on this a little bit. I don't know when I'm going to be making another video, but I'm going to get my head out of my fourth point of contact and try to get myself back in line and making like two videos a month. And if I have time, start making more because I, I have slipped entirely, whether it's firearms content or whether it's just blender content or another game. We'll see y'all stay safe. Have a good one. I'm out.